Okay. <laughs> We want to start or wait a couple more minutes. Well, I know Sylvia won't be joining because she can't. She has a conflict on first Sundays. So um, she she can't join us. Um, I messaged Barbara, but I, I, did, I didn't hear back from her. So she may not be joining either. So those are the two that I know of. Okay. So Sylvia permanently can't join us then, huh? Yeah. That's sad for us. She's, this is a book club that's been going for 15 years and wow. that's their time, so. Well, no, welcome, Mary Jo. <clears throat> I can well, unmute myself and say hi. Hi. Great. Glad you're here. I still I still wish that instead of having people put their names in the chat, that you would let people speak their names so that we can see people's faces while we're hearing their name and where they're from. It keeps people at a distance when they when you just use chat for that instead of letting Letting us see a person's face and hear them say where they're from. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's fine. That's one of the reasons we wanted to start 10 minutes before the hour. So we could have a chance to chat with each other. That's right. You're right, Mary Jo. Mm -hmm. But it also bears um, consideration. I mean, we are, we've just been a small enough group here. You know, pr prior with COVID, when there were so many people, that wasn't necessarily a possibility. But when we have such small numbers, why we can just say, hi, I'm Ken. <laughs> yeah. Or whomever. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we, we need to start if, or else we won't be able to end on time. Okay. Got Roger's here and Mary Ann. Wonderful. Welcome. All right. This is uh, First Sundays, Honoring Creation and Traditions in Image, Stillness, Word, Song, and Dance. This is an interfaith worship experience. It's also an active experience, and we invite you to participate in ways that make you feel comfortable. Gallery view is the best way to see everyone. You can make gallery larger by sliding the double line in the center of your screen to the left or to the right. If you don't understand how to do that, please raise your hand, ask, and we will help you. You can find the chat box button at the bottom of your screen. That's usually where it is for most of you. And we will have some sharing time in small groups. And we will meet, we will meet together for about 60 minutes. And... This is um, creation spirituality, honoring all of creation as original blessing. Creation spirituality integrates the wisdom of Eastern religions and Western religions, spirituality, and global indigenous cultures with the emerging scientific understanding of the universe and the passion of creativity. It is both a tradition and a movement celebrated by mystics and agents of social change from every age and culture. It is also the tradition of the historical Jesus himself, since it is the wisdom tradition of Israel. I'm going to turn it over to Patty. So that since this is February, we're honoring the second principle of creation spirituality. In creation, God is both imminent and transcendent, this is panentheism, which is not theism, God out there, and not atheism, no God anywhere. We experience that the divine is in all things and all things are in the divine. And it, we, um, we found this lovely uh, poem uh, from uh, Mondays in Spirituality, another group, and they quoted this poem from Nikita Gill, we have calcium in our bones, iron in our veins, carbon in our soils, and nitrogen in our brains. 
93% stardust with souls made out of flames. We are all just stars that have people names. And this month, since it's February, we're uh, using Black, it's Black History Month. And we're using this month as a lens through which we can explore the story of our country and our place in society. We know that much truth of our country's history is emerging. It's been hidden under layers of justification of horrors committed by Christianist colonizers in search of wealth and power. And so February 4th today is the birthday of Rosa Parks, who was born in Tuskegee, Alabama in 1913. And in the 1940s and 50s, she served as the secretary of the Montgomery chapter of the NAACP, working as a civil rights organizer and an activist. And I had a story um, when we were talking about planning this liturgy um, that um, in one of the few years after Matthew returned from his silencing at the Va by the Vatican, there were about 300 people gathered at Omega for a summer, a week of summer workshops with Matt Fox. And in a question and answer period, somebody asked him, who's the patron saint or a hero that you, you, from whom you get inspiration? And he thought for a while and he said, Rosa Parks. And that kind of stunned everybody. There was a little murmur that went through this huge audience. And, um, and he said, okay, I'll explain. Um, she was not getting off the damn bus. And if the church is a bus, the Vatican is not gonna tell me when I have to get off the bus. I'm gonna stay on as long as my conscience tells me that this is the right thing to do. Now, for some people, especially women, if there is a, an abusive situation in a church membership, then it's time for you to decide whether or not you're gonna stay on the bus. By all means, get off the bus. And I respect you for that decision. If you, de you decide when to get off the bus and when to protect your conscience and your soul. And um, I always remember that, that um, Rosa Parks was one of Matt Fox's heroines. So um, this month, uh, we're going to extend that uh, lens of um, Black History Month into our understanding of our spirituality in a, an exercise in creativity. So we're going to invite people, if you have a chance, to get some crayons or colors or just a pen and pencil if you want, uh, because we're going to have an art as meditation as part of worship today. Thank you. Okay. At this time, we're going to take a few moments to welcome each other and join into a circle together. Use the chat box. Pull that up the chat box and include the name you'd like to be called, what pronouns you'd like applied to you, where on the planet you're speaking from and whom you acknowledge as the ancestors who lived on the land before you. You may go to a website called nativeland.ca if you are not sure where you're, uh, the, the ancestors that lived on your land, you can find out on that particular site. We'll take a moment to add that to the chat box.
When you're finished writing, take a moment to look around the room at this virtual circle using the gaze of Darshan, making eye contact with the holiness in each other. Darshan is the loving gaze that restores both the giver and the received. Thank you for joining our circle. You are welcome in this circle. You are welcome, whoever you are, however you identify yourself racially, whoever your people are, wherever you are from, and with whatever beliefs guide your life, you are welcome. Aho. Mm. this time take a few moments so that we can center ourselves now that we welcome those who are sharing this virtual circle with us let us move more deeply into our connection with our creator our source you are invited to take a few slow deep breaths invite your body to relax and to soften anything that has become too tight within. Shake yourself out a bit, become more comfortable in your skin. Follow the rising and falling of your breath. Center in your personal rhythm. Invite yourself in your own way to turn your awareness toward the vital life force that is within and all around us, and the vital love force that binds the universe together. Hold a moment in stillness with me. Let the stillness surround you. Invite yourself to become present to the deep reservoir of life that resides in this stillness. As a symbol of this renewed connection with their creator, if it feels comfortable with you, we invite you to light a candle. You can light a real candle or hold the picture of a candle or find a candle on your cell phone or simply imagine that your thumb is a candle. Imagine lighting it. All of these lights remind us of the one light, the first light, our connection to the first beginning, the great flaring forth of creation. We acknowledge that this light, and remember that everything in the known universe has its origin in a single point of light. We all stand together in the light of creation. And now we're gonna take a few moments to honor the directions. You could do this seated or you may rise and um, turn to each direction as we do this. Let us face the east where the sun rises each day. As you do, reflect on anything that is new or emerging in your life. Let us face the south, where the sun shines strongest and which symbolizes summer and warmth. Reflect on the people, events, and things that warm your life or help you to grow. Let us face the west, where the sun sets each evening. As you do, consider anything that is coming to a close in your life. Let us face north, where the sun's light can be scarce and winters are cold. 
reflect on challenges or difficulties you face in your life, past and present. Let us now reach down and touch the ground. Let us think of the earth on which we live, the ancestors from which we come, and all that sustains our lives. Now, let us reach toward the sky, reflecting on our hopes and dreams and the mystery of faith. Aho, blessed be. Aho, blessed be. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lori. The opportunity to sing with one another, even though we won't hear one another, but we are sending the song out and we're sending the song to fill our homes, our apartments, our spaces, and we're to raise our prayer with our breath and our voice yet again. <clears throat> Center of the universe, center in me just that much center of the universe center in me center of the universe center in me Center of the universe, center in me. One more time, and center of the universe, center in me. Center of the universe, center in me. So you get to in any way you wish to, but otherwise I'll give us an idea of how could we then put that into our body as well. Put that into our breath, into our voice, and then into our body. And so I'm going to invite us to try just putting that centering center of the universe, center in me. 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 Caroline. Thank you, Michael. And so we have joined together in a virtual circle and we have opened our conscious connection to our creator. We have enlivened and embodied our bodies through body prayer. And so now we come to a time for us to share. Where have we been in the past week? Let's take stock of where we are at present and in this moment. And we're gonna be using the chat box for this sharing as we go through the four paths and share how this week went for us or is how this month went for us. And we do ask that you're respectful in terms of what you learn from the community and that you hold confidentiality to our circle. And so as a way of honoring where we are, some of our responses will also be read aloud. And so now take a moment of stillness and using the chat box, describe where you have experienced awe and wonder or gratitude this week.
the wind. The wonder and beauty of earth in her wind and her rain and her blusteriness. The skills and talents of some people that emerged this week. Wow. The rain that refills everything. I saw the first robin of the year in my yard today. My 10-year-old nephew's joy in creating a pistachio cake from scratch. A new used car with safety features. And now moving into the via negativa. Where have you experienced darkness, letting go, mystery, grief, emptiness, or anything that you don't understand or is unknown to you? Again, please use the chat box for your sharing. the rage and resentment on display from some political leaders, violence and war, being at a distance from a longtime friend. The mystery of blood clots in our bodies, how they travel and how they teach us about life. Charlotte's daughter, Laura, is looking at gastrectomy for her familial polyposis problem in the stomach. Losing a friend to dementia. Illness of dear friends. My fear of their pain and being unable to help them. Thinking of so many with health issues. And in the midst of so much change, we are being called to give birth to new creations. And so using the chat box, please name any place in your life where you are being called to give birth to new creations and where you're being called to expand your creativity. And this is also a place to mention others who are giving birth to new things and ex express your support for them. Taking up new leadership responsibilities in climate action groups locally, forging new alliances. We are all actively creating even here and now. Writing the last chapter in my novel in draft. Working on the 2024 Creation Spirituality Gathering. 
making changes at home and at church, making new friends in my winter home. Roger Brown for his book, learning from kindergartners as I dance with them weekly. And so thankfully our creations help to bring up, up around transformation in our lives. And so now please name any transformation taking place in you and others around you. This is also a way to honor the transformation taking place on our planet earth and our culture and our social institutions and also our deepest understanding. Spring is coming. Hopefulness for a resolution in Gaza. Working on a transformed me today, now. Younger leaders overcoming despair to make progress for living on living better on this planet. People giving up sleep and food to aid others. So let's all join together with our mutual concerns and opportunities to So welcoming ourselves now into this time of contemplation and action. Eternal love, eternal source of never ending wisdom. Our physical being is born of stardust. Our immortal being lives in the breath of our creator. We are the beloved children of the one. You hold and welcome us as we are, your blessed and beloved creation. You join us in times we're filled with awe, wonder, and gratitude. You comfort and connect with us when we feel alone through loss. You inspire us to bring forth essential medicine for the soul and you offer creativity that heals and rejuvenates us. You call us to justice making and to live beyond ourselves in service of the communities that we are a part of. Indeed, you embrace us just as we are in this moment. Blessed be. Uh -huh. Michael? Thank you, Carolyn. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. The divine are in all things, and all things are the divine. 
The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. Bless time. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. And so Nettie Garner took just these phrases and said, let's dance the principles of creation spirituality. And so just in short, short phrases, she's created a way for us to hold on to these for the week, hold on to these beyond the moment. And so if you get to create a gesture, you get to create a gesture. If you don't get stuck, I'll make up one for us and we'll start there. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. The divine is in all things, and all things are divine. Glory. Thank you, Michael. Today's sacred reading whoops, is from a book called The Color of Water by James McBride. A few pages into this novel, it's a young boy who lives in New York. His mother was born in Virginia and grew up there. This is autobiographical. It's a memoir. His mother ran away to New York and married a black man and was disowned by her Jewish family. And so in this book, they talk about uh, one chapter, she'll be talking about um, her childhood and then the next it'll be the kids. They had uh, 13 kids and the, hus the first husband she married was a pastor and um, they lived in Red Hook in New York, which was a very black community. And um, so he, he would get odd comments and things from the other kids in the neighborhood because his white mother loved to ride her bicycle through the neighborhood and it embarrassed him to no end because this was a black neighborhood and who was she and what was he and all of that. So this one conversation, he asks his mother, why do you cry in church? I asked her one afternoon after the service because God makes me happy, then why cry? I'm crying because I'm happy. Anything wrong with that? No, I said, but there was, because happy people did not seem to cry like she did. Mama's tears seemed to come from somewhere else, a place far away, a place inside her that she never let any of us children visit. And even as a boy, I felt there was pain behind them. I thought it was because she wanted to be black like everyone else in the church, because maybe God liked black people better. And one afternoon on the way home from church, I asked her whether God was black or white. A deep sigh. Oh, boy, God's not black. He's not white. He's a spirit. Does he like black or white people better? He loves all people. 
He's a spirit. What's a spirit? A spirit's a spirit. What color is God's spirit? It doesn't have a color, she said. God is the color of water. Water doesn't have a color. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. The gift of color in our lives is, I think, often how we are all taught as children. Each month, we're trying to look at these principles of creation spirituality from a different perspective, from a different lens. And today, we're going to use art as meditation as a way to do that. And so the color has been given to us in such early forms as um, you walk into a restaurant and you're handed a color to color as a child. And perhaps you're given colors in your kindergarten and first grade, and you graduate slowly from eight colors to 16, to 24, to 64, to 96, to 120. And you're taught that this is where it's at. Color is where it is at. Um, and you've got all this opportunity to use these colors while you're here in the world. And it's true because light hits the color um, there and all the other colors get absorbed and just the one color comes back at us. Just the one color gets to uh, be seen in that spectrum at that moment. Our eyes do that magically. They can pick up the color from the object. Of course, we're giving off color as well. And that's the amazing thing of creation spirituality is that we acknowledge that everything's alive. <laughs> and oh my gosh. And so that it's sending out light. And so that's just a gift of color. And But then we notice that the crayon company kind of graduated beyond flesh colored crayon and got to 24 colors of the world. And they tried to say, well, what is going on in the colors of the world? And what is happening in our understanding of color when we talk as humans? And that we're just beginning to understand what does that mean to then say, oh, 24 colors, huh? I, race has never been explained to me with 24 colors. Um, and so then we look at race and say, oh, well, maybe th this race construct was made up because it was. And so we were given this crayon box to understand life with and how color is reflected back to us. And the divine is in all things and all things are divine. And we understood that from this color. We see the world and we understood that. But on the next slide, I'm thinking about Rosa Parks. And I'm thinking about the young man in the story that um, Lori just told. And how different it would have been if we had been given this box of crayons. And I'm wondering with you today, was this a better box of crayons to give everybody? Because I think there's something going on in it that's really helpful about this. When we know that paint or the colors, the if you use them as an artist, if you use them as an imagination person, if you use them as a creative person, if we use color, that black contains all colors when you're doing art. It's, it's in, Every color is hiding in the black. Um, another way to say it, black is the presence of all colors, that it's holding us all. Black is the sum of all colors, that it, if we add it all up, black is where we're at. And if we mix all colors together in equal amounts, they create black. It is the result of all colors being absorbed into one. Black can absorb them all and holds them all. And this seems really counterintuitive. <laughs> this is like not understand, but I think that there's something hiding in this for our understanding of the world because it wasn't the universe without light. And now our cosmology said that out of black came all color all stardust, all elements, everything came out of black. So we have like an example of it. And if we do Ancestry.com or 23andMe or 
CI, CRI genetic tech, genetics, if you do any of that, then we all know that we all go back to Africa and that like black is power. Black matters. Black is beautiful because all the colors are in it. All the colors are being held in that. And this crayon box is way more interesting to me today. I'm trying to explore with you, what does this mean if we accepted a, a different crayon box from the beginning and we were teaching young people hiding in this color are all the colors. And are we all persons of color? We're all persons of colors because we're all coming from the universe story and we're coming from this place where we understand that it was out of there, out of that place that we were able to emerge and let one color come out of us. And what's exciting is that every day I could choose a different color to let come out of me or whatever community I'm with, wherever I am, I could draw on this color and allow myself to recognize my color in each community, in each place. And so I go to this next slide and I'm just wondering if divinity is kind of the new black and that we are telling our story through this creation story now and through this understanding that if anything came out from black and black holds everything and black absorbs everything and all of it is inside of us and I recognize all those colors in me because I can stick my neck out through and use those colors in each way, in each place I need to. I can find 120 crayons. I can find 120 million crayons inside of me. And that I can do that by using a different coloring box. I can get out of the cage of that box and say, through black, I release all color. Black is like, how color works. Black is the story of color. Is like life is living black color. And if we remember our divine identity as a person of all colors, completely saturated in absorbing colors, then we have a cosmic black divine fingerprint on us. And I see them here. And that's our original blessing, that we know this and that we could see the divinity imprinted in us who wanted us to see it all and know it all and, and be a part of each of that and be able to live into that like God, like the divine, that we could actually experience all of those colors, rich, saturated color. It's our cosmic identity. Everything that we include, everything that we absorb, everything that we do in our prayer, in our lives, everything that we bring in, we make holy. Everything we exclude, kick out of the crayon box, we damn. But if we could absorb the universe story, if we could take in our original blessing, if we could say that we have this knowledge inside of us, I have this fingerprint on me and it unlocks my original blessing and it calls us into action. It calls us into using all these colors in my black universe story and to draw them out. Because I could, we could, change education systems. We could change governments. We could change voting. We could change healthcare. We could stop war if we used all our colors and really drew them out of this rich black divinity that is each of us. The quote was, fear is the enemy of justice, the enemy of hope, the enemy of creativity, but it has no power 
when we rise up, when we speak up, act up, and bring our truth into the world? And how do we bring that truth out and show all our colors and see the black as where we are all coming from? And that is our truth. And I'm just thinking that might be the understanding of the mystery of the Immaculate Conception. Original blessing and knowing the black is the color box we're working in. I'm gonna give us some time just to think around what could we do in art to explore today What's what's going on with our color world? Where are we in that? Are we really persons of all colors? Is that who we are genetically? Is that who we are culturally? Is that who we are racially, biologically? Could we in poetry, in song, in pen and ink, in pencil, in crayon, explore color of black during Black History Month. We've got about eight minutes um, to just uh, do some art. And um, any questions? What does it mean for you to be a person of all colors? And you can set a timer and come back in eight minutes, or you can turn your um, camera off for a minute and we'll call you back in eight minutes, whichever you prefer. You could maybe open up the, uh, yeah, remove the spotlight.
perhaps about another two minutes, continue your work. Let's go ahead and invite everyone back. While you're coming back, I will go over the respect guidelines that we use before we um, have our discussion, we always like to go over these. R is for take responsibility for what you say and feel without blaming others. E is use empathetic listening. S, be sensitive to differences in communication styles. P, ponder what you hear and feel before you speak. E, examine your own assumptions and perceptions. C, Keep confidentiality. T, trust ambiguity because we are not here to debate who is right or who is wrong. And you can once again use the two lines in the middle of your screen to make your gallery larger if you'd like to. And uh, we're gonna open up the floor for, for discussion and sharing. I'll go first. Because of what Michael said, I drew my thumbprint in multiple colors. <laughs> this is what Michael made me think of. My thumbprint is not just black and white with the ink. It's, it's just as many colors as it can be. I'm not the greatest artist, but the idea is there. <laughs> so anyone else would like to share what they've 
have been working on. Well, I have a, I have a rainbow um, and a mountain and some trees. Nice. All right. Rainbow's definitely good. Yes, yes. It seemed to fit the theme. Mm -hmm. Well, and I drew um, a black hole and out of the black hole, which I call Ayin, comes all the qualities of the divine, which are in multiple colors. So mm -hmm. out of the blackness, out of the divine has emanated all these different colors and qualities of the divine, such as exuberance, balance, compassion, light, peacemaking, passion for justice, radiance, ineffable exuberance, balance, and royalty. <laughs> All different colors, whatever quality of the divine, the color reminded me of is what I wrote. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. That really is. Hmm. Who wants to go next? Yeah. I oh. Go ahead. I didn't have colors, but I had a, a similar um, impression as Carolyn did of the bursting forth out of the blackness. Mm -hmm. And it's this explosion of colors from the universe. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Mary Jo, would you like to share what you've been working on? Okay, okay. Lois, how about you? I think we might have lost her for a minute. Michael, did I'm you? Back. <laughs> um, would it make sense to stay in our room here and share? Or I am not sure where we are. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Perfect. So I apologize. Yeah. Would you like to share? It's my turn. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. I started and got this far, um, and then my wind blew me off the internet. And so I'm guessing, <laughs> um, I'm yeah, I'm just really. Uh, challenged by looking at the universe story or looking at um, the divine is in all things from the perspective of the color black. And, um, and then I found those words that I shared with you. And, and so mm -hmm. I shared those with you. And mm -hmm. that's where I was today with that. That was my artwork. Okay. Cool. I, um, I don't know. I can't see if if I'm I can't see my image as I'm speaking, Lori. But anyway, um, I didn't do a drawing. I started to do some poetry. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So, and your image looks uh, perfectly good, Patty. You're fine. Oh, okay. Thank you. I don't know if I'm centered or not. But anyway, um, the pictures of the Crayola boxes kind of brought me back to my childhood, every September when we had to go back to school, I was so bummed because I loved the summertime. I loved being free. I loved walking with no shoes for a whole summer. And then we had to go back to school, back to the city and back to wearing shoes and back to school. But there was this wonderful constellation and that was the smell of a box of fresh Crayola crayons. There's a specific smell, it's, it's just indescribable. And that was enough to like get me over that hump of being disappointed that I had to go back to wearing shoes. And so I, I just started writing like little poetic lines. A new school year with challenge and triumph, 
stories brought to life with color in a time when TV was black and white. Um, and freestyle swirls were not the vogue, fairy tales with lessons, heroes, and happy ever after. Now the, so that was really what we were coloring then. And now the palette addresses real life's forms where there is hunger, pain, atrocity, hatred. How to color in the power to peacemakers, doctors for Medicine Sans Frontier, and World Central Kitchen chefs and cooks, healing and feeding all, helping to create a world of colored beauty. And that's where I left off. Thank you, Michael, for that. We could stop war if we could draw out all our colors. Mm. Draw out all our, our possibilities. Thank you. I'll say something now since not having, I don't have any art supplies in my house. The, the children are all gone and I'm a writer, not not at all, you know, not that kind of artist. But I'll sh I'll share the reflection that came since we moved away from it having to be artwork. Great. There wasn't light it, with the Big Bang existed briefly before light was born, so it was all dark. And I I thought just like the crystal that hangs in my window when the light shines through it it breaks it out into all the colors. When light came at the birth, shortly after the birth of the universe, then you had the spread of all the colors out of out of that original darkness of, of the Big Bang. Mm. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Jo. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> And, you know, when we say art is meditation, that includes writing, drawing, you know, singing, anything. It doesn't just mean, you know, you don't have to have crayons. You don't have to have paints. It could be anything. In yeah. fact, I think most of us do do poetry because it's easier. <laughs> but, yeah, you can definitely write. Poetry is definitely or any kind of writing is, is art. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you for that wonderful inspiration, Michael. I guess we need to move on unless anybody mm -hmm. else share anything else. Okay. We're running kind of late. Would you like to do the donations, Michael? So the opportunity to practice, 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 practice. How do we get anything done? We practice, we try to change and become um, a person who thinks well about each thing we do each day and each uh, group we are with and how we can be a part of that community, whether it's a sharing of treasure, time, talent, um, or just presence. And that's the gift for us is if that exists for you, if you have a way to support the work, um, you can be a part of our worships these first Sundays. Just say, I'd love to do this. I'd love to do that. I'd love to do that. Um, or you can, um, there's a way to reach out. Um, if you like to write checks, if you like to um, send things in online, it's there. And it's an opportunity for us to circulate, 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 yeah, send it on, send it out pay it forward, pay it forward, pay it forward. And um, it's an opportunity to be a part of a community. Mary Jo has left us and she said goodbye to everybody. All right, I, I guess she's just... in my chat then, too bad. <laughs> mm. Okay, we'll take a few minutes now to bless each of us together as we get ready to leave. So place your hands over your heart and repeat after me. The truth of my being is as radiant as a star. 
The truth of my being is as radiant as a star. The love within me is stronger than any other force in the universe. Love within me is stronger than any other force in the universe. I am a beloved blessing of the creator. I am a beloved blessing of the creator. Aho, blessed be. Amen. Now, if you would please unmute yourself, make sure that you're on gallery view so that we can all see all of each other and keep one hand on your heart, put the other out so that we can bless each other as we go from here. I repeat after me, the truth of your being is as radiant as a star. The truth, the truth of, of your being is as radiant as a star. The love within you is stronger than any other force in the universe. The love within you is stronger than any other force in the universe. You are a beloved blessing of the creator. You are a beloved blessing of the creator. Aho, blessed be, amen. Aho, blessed be, amen. Now, as we come to the end of our time together, take your candle, transfer the light to your own heart, and send it forth to bless those who need blessings. Now, extinguish the flame, even as our connection continues in spirit. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to turn it over to Patty because she has a couple of announcements for us. Well, it's basically one which is, uh, I don't know if everyone here has gotten the email invitation, but Creation Spirituality Communities is going to get together in person for a summer gathering, early summer, and it will be May 30th. Uh, to June 2nd, I'm sorry, May 31st to June 2nd in Cape Cod at a lovely retreat center there. And they can handle about 130 of us all together. And um, I certainly plan on being there. Lori and I are going together and we hope that um, all of you could join us. <laughs> I don't know if it's possible, see what your schedule is like and so forth. And um, if anybody did not receive an email invitation with the information about it, um, please uh, let us know right now because I'll, we'll see to it that you, you do get the information. Um, Matthew Fox and Brian Swim will be headlining the event. Um, they will join us via Zoom because they both live in California, um, but there will be many people from all over the country coming to this gathering. Um, we will have a cosmic celebration on Saturday night. And um, so it's, it'll be workshops and keynotes and um, looking at the stars at night on the beach because it'll be a place on, um, right on the water. So it's, it promises to be really, really a wonderful gathering. So um, we would love it if all of you could come. I have been, I've been to that um, retreat center and it's easy to find and um, I think you'll enjoy it. I'm not able to.